Hey everybody, it's good to see you again. Thank you for joining us. I want to talk to you today about the way you take. The way you take. You'll be amazed when you discover that everybody takes a way of some sort. My text today is from Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. And this is what it says, very simply. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Now I want to tell you that all of us are born into this world with the propensity to take a certain way in life. We are all born with an ability to choose a vision of life that suits us. And unless God intervenes in our lives, we'll pick and choose our own philosophy, our own vision of life, and we'll live it like that. Now, it is very true that some people are able to live their lives quite successfully and fairly happily until their lives end. But for most, the majority of people today, they do live their lives from moment to moment, not always knowing what they're doing or where they're going, and feeling a quiet and a disconcerting sense of discontent inside, and not sure that they are really as fulfilled as they ought to be. They feel there's something missing. And that may be true of you watching this particular Bible talk today. And so it's very appropriate for us to take notice of these words that says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but at the end there are the ways of death. And let me remind you then, first of all, is that uh, we all choose a way of life. We all do it. We don't intend to do it. It's not like we sit down and say, okay, what sort of life should I live and what way should I choose now? It's what we kind of develop into or grow into or what influences us most. That is why we've got to be so careful as parents. You know, your children are watching the way that you live and the way that you have chosen. And in all likelihood, they'll imitate you in some way. So we've got to watch ourselves in the way in which we live. Now, many people choose a philosophy of life that has got nothing to do with God at all. Some people feel that, that, that God should play no role in their lives at all, and that there is nothing in their lives that should have anything to do with religion at all. But the Bible teaches us that when we choose the way we take, it's either God's way, or it's a way that leads to death. Now, God's way is very unpalatable to many people today. Some people may try to compromise on that by choosing a way of religion. But religion also doesn't satisfy. Some people are intensely religious, but it has no ultimate fulfillment. Some people choose the way of secularism, where we live just for this world and its pleasures and nothing else. And some people choose the way of hedonism, where we live entirely for pleasure and for the sensual part of life. And some people just live self-centered lives in that way. But we all follow a way. We all pick up some kind of way in which we live. And we all have characteristics of our lives. So we talk to each other sometimes and say, that person there, you can never trust what he says. Or that person there, they're full of hot air. Or that person there, they just love money. Or that person there, they just live for their sport. We identify them as we talk about them because they've chosen a way of life. And that way of life comes through in everything that they do. So we all choose a way of life. But secondly, the verse tells us that the problem is that the way of life we choose often seems right to us. Sometimes it seems satisfying. Sometimes it seems as if it is the thing that we ought to do, which is why when anybody questions them, there is a reaction when we ask them if this is what they really ought to be doing, they take offense that we should be questioning them and the way of life that they have chosen. When we ask them to think it through, or can we enter into discussion with them about what they've chosen in life or what their main goals are or what their gods are in life or why it is they've chosen to reject God or what their philosophy is, instead of being able to engage us in a decent conversation, instead of doing that, they get angry with us because to them, Their way always seems right. But the problem is this, that sometimes when you choose your own way, what you're able to do is trample your conscience into the ground. 
you can't kill your conscience, but you can, you can suppress your conscience. You can trample it into the ground, and there it will lie dormant until odd moments later in the years when it suddenly rises and strikes you again. And so what happens to us is we go through life following our own way, but at the end of the day, we've got no rock to build on, nothing to stand on. We've got no ultimate upon which we can stand. And so we've got nothing to fall back on when trouble comes. We've got no way of explaining anything that happens in this world. We've only got ways of being angry, but we've got no ways of explaining anything. We have no philosophy of our own that's able to explain why things are as they are. And so we have got no resistance to the flow of life and to the flow of history. We've got to go along with it. We have no understanding of it at all. And for many people whose own ways are filled with their own self-interests, at the end of the day, they land up with depression. No rock to stand on, no answers to life. And yet their own way has seemed right to them and they've rejected all arguments and all offers of discussion for an alternative way. But worse than that, the verse goes on to say that the end of their ways are death. Now that's really serious, people. And we ought to really listen up on this one. Because when the Bible talks about death, it's not talking about only physical death. We know that we will all die we try to put, off, put it off as long as we can, but it will happen to all of us. But when the Bible speaks of death, it speaks of death in more than one way. Not only physical death, but the death of all our hopes. It's the death of all our activities, the death of all our dreams. It's the death of our lives. Sometimes you meet people like that, whose lives have got no hope, and everything about them reeks of death. There's no intelligent conversation. There's, there's no love, there is, there's no warmth, there's just the sense of a decaying personality in a human body. The ways that people choose sometimes lead to all kinds of death. And finally, of course, to physical death and then ultimately to the final death after the judgment. And so it is true, the Bible says, that there is a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof may be the way of death. But yay, here's the good news. It need not be like that. Of course it doesn't have to be like that because Jesus Christ came into the world and he makes the difference between death and life. And we need to believe that and understand that and get hold of that in our hearts and minds. The Lord Jesus Christ. I say those words deliberately. He is the Lord. He is Jesus. He is the Lord he is, he is the ruler of the universe. He is Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth. He is Christ, the anointed one who came to go to the cross so that he could bear the burden of our sin and guilt before God. Rise again from the dead and give us hope. Do you know what he said? He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Everything that we want in life, everything that we think we had, choosing our own ways, Everything that we need to make our lives full of meaning is bound up in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the way. And he makes the difference between hopelessness, despair, and hope and joy. And my invitation to you today is to forsake what you have been believing in and to turn to him and let him change your life and turn you into a person with real hope and a real sense of destiny and purpose and above all a person who knows God and is part of his great family. How do you do that? Well, you do it by believing with your heart. But sometimes we express our hearts in prayer, but you may not know what to say. So I'm going to pray a prayer for you and it will appear on the screen and you can make it your own. And then you can write to the address that appears afterwards. Here's the prayer. Almighty God, I feel very confused today. I always thought that what I have believed is right. I thought that the way I lived was right. 
But today, I am in despair and depression. I feel I'm going nowhere. Please intervene. I put my faith as best as I know how in Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way. Will you help me? Forgive my sins and make me part of your family. Amen. Did you pray that? That's wonderful. Tell someone you did. Someone in your family. Somebody in your media circle. Tell someone you did it. And then write you the address that appears on your screen. And God bless you.